slate. And I am so grateful. My colleague is so sweet to like have this all set up for me and everything, but sometimes it just doesn't go the way it's planned. <laughs> So I am so glad to have Dr. Stephen Ellis here. He is one of my favorite people and one of our favorite affiliates in South Carolina. And um, how long have you been a brain health coach with us now? Let's see, I think it's been close to four years, maybe. Yeah, so more than half of my time with the clinic has been spent, you know, collaborating with you and our patients. So awesome. Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been hanging out for a while. Yeah, well, I'm so excited. And um, when I reached out to you about seeing if you wanted to look at some of the other courses, you jumped right on it. You're like, I want to learn about the concussion course. And you knocked it out really fast, despite your really busy schedule with clients doing Christian counseling. So we are so excited to hear about your experience with the course. And then definitely if people had questions later, I will definitely respond to those messages. Sure. Be great. What are some of your biggest takeaways from the course? Well, you know, when we are taught to ask people, I love the, the uh, brain assessment uh, uh, handout that's on the back of that, that's included with that course. Yeah. Because, you know, when you start asking people about brain injury, you know, typically, like you understand, you ask them, have you ever had a brain injury? And they go, no. But then when you start going through and, and having more questions like, have you fallen off a bicycle? Have you had a skateboard accident? Have you ever hit your head? Uh, have you ever had a car wreck? When you have that list that really gets down to specific questions that jogs their memory about what type of uh, brain injury, because most people think brain injury is I've been knocked out and been in a coma for four days or whatever. Right. But uh, the reality of brain injury can be just a real hard shaking of the head or whatever. So one of the takeaways that I got from the course was really the detail as to how to be able to ask the questions. Uh, and you keep going back and keep asking and keep asking because in my experience, after I've talked to people and asked them like Dr. Amon suggests, uh, uh, that uh, 10 times, then they finally go, oh, yeah, um, I remember. Now, I'll tell you from a personal experience, uh, which, uh, again, caused me to be interested in this concussion course, because, you know, a lot of people, uh, when the doc gave the understanding of how many um, concussions there are in a year, over 60 million people, you know, have concussions that are reported, uh, 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 so when I did my own spec scan and I was talking with Dr. Matthews, she asked me, she said, she was pointing at my, at my spec scan on my, um, right temporal lobe. And she says, when did you have a brain injury to your right temple? And I went, I haven't had a brain injury to my right temple. And after thinking about it a little while, it was like, oh, wait a minute, in the seventh grade, I grabbed a pole and threw it on the ground and it bounced back up and hit me right here on the right temple. I said, oh that gosh. was seventh grade. She said, well, there you go. There it is. Now that's 53 years ago. So Great. I would imagine if I'd have had a spec scan right after that happened, there'd been a big hole over there in my right temporal lobe. But that was yeah. one of the things I got from the course was just the reality of how to get into the understanding and some practical application of, you know, the, the different questions you can ask people to see uh, if you can help jog their memory to some type of brain injury. I love that you keep saying jog their memory and like memory problems are one of their <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which as a counselor, I'm sure that happens a lot. So what are some other things that were kind of aha moments for you, maybe clients that you're currently seeing or clients you've seen in the past that might have had something like that, which could have had something to do with their marital conflict, anger, those types of symptoms related to the temporal lobe? Absolutely. Because, you know, right temporal lobe is one of the anger areas. And so uh, when there's somebody has an anger problem, if you can go back and look at the cause that that could have been from a brain injury. And again, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, is it Chapek? I believe that's how he says it. Chapek. Chapek. So almost like chapstick. Chapek. Okay. Uh, Dr. Chapek was really clear on uh, the difference between 
you know, major uh, cry, uh, chronic brain injury and, and just a regular TBI uh, that would not be as severe. But as far as the treatment goes and as far as the injury goes, uh, even the injury showing up days after from a symptomatic standpoint of the actual event. Uh, and it was so funny, right as I have watched that, uh, that lesson and he, he told me about that, I was watching something on TV and this guy had a brain injury uh, and then they let him out of the hospital. He went home and then three days later he collapses, you know, and it's like, uh. yeah, okay. So anyway, uh, uh, when I'm talking to clients and can get back into their history to find out uh, what, even if it wasn't a major brain injury, and this is another takeaway that I got uh, from Dr. Chapik in the course was the reality of how long a brain injury sustained symptoms can be after the actual event. I mean, even, even to years right. and years and years. And there again, Dr. Matthews pointed out a place in my brain, 53 years old, uh, right. that uh, was still showing uh, some type of uh, previous injury. So uh, it's a really good idea to be able to be a, get those people thinking about that and then talk about the difference between healing, um, whether it's uh, right after it or long term. Well, I love that. And I know that we do share some patients and I was trying to dig through and see how many were impacted by this. Do you have any cases that, you know, once they came through, you kind of realized a lot of what you guys have been trying to work on? in counseling had a lot to do with this TBI that we didn't know was there? Well, I've not really had a lot of experience with my own clients uh, about locating a particular brain injury uh, that we ended up treating. Now, I've, I've talked with a lot of clients that said, oh yeah, I, I, I got hit. Uh, so I've had several clients, and this is another reason for the course that was really helpful. I've had several clients that said, oh yeah, I've, I got hit when I was on a swing when I was four years old and I was in the hospital for four days uh, in a coma. And, uh, but, uh, you know, there's been no problem since. And I'm going, wait a minute, you're, you're struggling with alcohol. You can't have, keep a, a good relationship for more than two or three months. You're, you know, and I, you have a bad relationship with your family. I mean, you just went on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And I went, and that's probably because of that brain injury. You, you have not had that part of your brain healed to the degree that it could be to the point that it's not giving you these symptoms that may not look like brain injury. You don't have blood running down your head or anything, right? but your, your, your uh, brain has been injured for sure. Well, I love that you see your clients like that. What are is some pointers you would give to just anyone watching, but especially, you know, Christian counselors that are your colleagues about how this course could be helpful? Well, the thing that could be helpful with this course is the specifics about what you can do. Now, uh, again, Dr. Chapik says 80% of people that have brain injuries you know, they go through the regular protocol, which he suggests you do. And this is what everybody should suggest you do is go through the normal protocol, which is go to your doctor or go to the emergency room, uh, have a scan if they, if they need to from a standpoint of an MRI or whatever, right. and just double check, make sure there's not a brain bleed or whatever. And then uh, after that, he says, uh, you know, 80% uh, of those are going to recover with just following that protocol, which is, okay, you don't have a brain bleed. So go home, rest a couple of days, get some sleep, you know, don't do too a whole, whole lot and you'll be fine. Uh, well, yeah, maybe for 80% of the people. Okay. But for 20% of the people now, if I'm not mistaken, that's one out of five. OK, so one out of five folks, they go home and they don't get better. So one of the great things about this course was uh, Dr. Chappick gives a list. Uh, I love the first aid kit uh, that he gives. And uh, the, the cool thing is, again, there's a there's a handout uh, that he shows. Uh, you've got the you've got that, you know, the head injury assessment uh, 
And if we really wanted to take the time, I could share my screen and show you these because I just have downloaded them into my uh, my computer. Uh, That's awesome. But uh, the cool thing is, uh, he's got a he's he's got a list of uh, concussion first aid kit. My daughter is a physical therapist, and so she deals with uh, stuff all the time. My yeah. two. Uh, my two grandsons are 14 and 12, uh, and they're here with me this weekend. Uh, and uh, my son, my my oldest grandson plays uh, baseball. Um, uh, my youngest grandson is a is loves animals, so he's ridden horses and all that stuff. So I'm going to send this first aid kit list of supplements uh, and and stuff to take immediately when you have a brain injury now again we've got i love what dr chapix is doing and dr amen is doing especially with this course is another highlight of this course is the way it highlights the reality of brain injury and what happens to our brain so i would encourage other counselors uh, to really get into the reality of what brain injuries can do uh, from a symptom standpoint months, uh, weeks, years after the initial injury. Uh, right. So with this, with this uh, uh, brain injury uh, uh, first aid kit, I mean, you get a kid falling down on the baseball field or he gets hit in the head with a bat. Right. Okay. Then you pull out of your purse or your car, this little uh, bag of things that you can take right then right. And then go to the hospital and get the protocol and run through that. Uh, and then after that, follow up with the other things that you could do. Uh, and it's not all just he, he I love the uh, the lesson on the ketogenic diet. Uh, if you can't get all the supplements and all that stuff, then a ketogenic diet is going to really help as one of the uh, healers of our brain because of the fat content and less sugar and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's just a really, really good course that gives you some real practicality about how you can really talk to people that and discover brain injury that may be the cause of their problem. Well, I love everything that you're doing. And yes, the first aid kit is definitely my favorite thing about the course and the book and uh, just everything that Dr. Chapik has shared. Um, my mom never missed a soccer game growing up. She was that soccer mom. She brought balloons, orange slices, fresh water, Gatorade, like the whole thing. And now knowing what she knows, she would have definitely like been sprinting on the field with this first aid kit when one of us would take too hard of a ball to the head, which often was what happened to me or, you know, being up north, you know, slipping and falling sometimes because if it's raining or snowing, we're still going to play. And that's not safe, obviously, but uh, it's just kind of funny to think about, you know, because my concussions from sports were so severe and I was in so much pain. And, you know, just taking some vitamins that were going to help restore that function and Dr. Chapik going into all of the data showing how those individual ingredients help with the inflammation and just getting the neurons to reconnect. It's just unbelievably cool. It is. It really is. And I think it's something that's overlooked in typical uh, medicine. Oh, uh, absolutely. Because, you know, I mean, emergency room doctors, they're trained for everything. And so they may can pick up on that, but then to really realize the significant difference that has been proven by Dr. Chapik's work and Dr. Amon's work uh, with spec scans on what the repair can do, uh, it's pretty amazing to just ignore that information when it has such a tremendous effect on our thought process. Yeah. And I mean, the brain can heal so quickly when you start doing the right things for it. I mean, you know that some, a lot of people, you know, know that that have come through the clinic and to actually see the changes is just so cool. And of course I'm kind of spoiled because I've been able to get rescanned and see, you know, literally areas in my brain that it looks like I have a hole because I'm not getting any blood flow there or very yeah. blood flow. And to have that completely healed, it's just so cool. 
I was going to ask you if you if you mentioned several concussions playing soccer. I was going to ask you, uh, had, did you do your brain scan? Did you do a spec scan and see some of that, and then do the treatment, and then do another scan and see the the result? Exactly. Yeah. So you could see how um, I had a couple injuries where I slipped and fell and hit the back of my head, and so that I had issues in the parietal lobe back here. Yeah. My prefrontal cortex and temporal lobe had that asymmetrical pattern where um like this was low in function this was low in function yeah from the motion yeah. of how the injuries happened yeah. and so we did the targeted supplements and the prefrontal cortex healed the parietal lobes healed um i have a nice pretty symmetrical even blood flow brain now that's awesome that is awesome. That's pretty cool yeah and dr chapik was one of the doctors that helped me with that so really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. A lot of people don't know too. Um, when you have head injuries, it damages your pituitary gland, which is in charge of your hormones. So that had a lot to do with some of my uh, hormonal imbalances. So I had to do some bioidentical hormones for repairing the brain, but also the pituitary and then my endocrine system. Absolutely. There's a and so that was super, super crucial because I was taking spec focus supplements but I really needed to focus on my whole body too, from all of the issues that the concussions had caused. That's awesome. And lesson eight is on hormones. Okay. Yeah. From the pituitary gland that is damaged in a brain injury. Uh, and he talks about those neuro hormones that are significant in healing of the brain. So which yeah. one of them is vitamin D, which a lot of people don't know is a neuro hormone, not just a vitamin. Right. And so many of Americans are deficient and more than ever, we need to be taking high doses of vitamin D. Yep. Measuring it, knowing what it is, getting it higher, remeasuring it, making sure it's getting high. Um, it's so important to your brain. It's so important to every cell in your body. And I love that he kind of just briefly mentions that when it's like one of the most important things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then, uh, then, you know, you got the vitamin D, then you've got omega three and, uh, the other things too. Uh, another interesting chapter uh, was um, uh, the structural integrity. Uh, I believe that was lesson 10, where he talks about how sometimes the uh, spinal cord, uh, where it goes into the brain, mm -hmm. uh, where that hole is at the bottom of our brain, our spinal cord comes out yeah. of it, goes down into, uh, that sometimes that can get damaged, which shifts the nerve endings in your neck that that you know the cervical uh, vertebrae are out of joint or out of sync that are putting more pressure on a nerve that's been damaged already so the structural integrity by going to a neurochiropractor or something like that to try to help that uh is is another idea that you wouldn't think about from a brain standpoint but totally uh, some of these brain injuries are are really amazing um uh my son has a dear friend uh, that lives in the town where he does, that was on a, that 35 years old, blowing and going in his own business, tremendous fella, uh, got on one of these motorized skateboards. Oh, gosh. And, and this is an athlete, okay? I mean, yeah. he surfs, he skateboards, he, you know, rides bicycles. I mean, he's just, he is an athlete, okay? He jumped on one of the, he got one of these motorized skateboards and they're just skating around downtown. Uh, and something happened and he flipped off and hit the back of his head okay. and spent 33 days in the hospital. Oh my gosh. Yeah, his TBI is critical. Wow. Um, uh, I mean, for 30 days, he couldn't swallow. Now, you know, cerebellum controls a lot of our coordination stuff. Uh, so that was damaged so bad. He, he couldn't swallow for 30 days. So wow. I'm excited about sending my son this list of supplements for him to get on uh, that will help him uh, to recover. Uh, but he, and he is recovering. He's out of ICU. He's, he's uh, uh, was in a room and I think it was day 33 uh, was his birthday. And so they showed a picture of him sitting there in the bed. So he's out of a coma. He's, he's, he's improving. 
uh, and he's fixing to eat this birthday cake full of sugar, (laughs) full of things that his brain doesn't need. Exactly. But there again, uh, some great practical stuff to apply uh, to to that person that we're going to give him some ideas uh, to do that that might help. So anyway. Yay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I mean, that's a horrible story, but again, we have such simple solutions in the course, yeah. in the book, and that can really just change people's lives and help them heal so much faster. Yep. That's another good thing is the book is, is basically the course. So uh, yeah. that, that'd be good to have on your shelf for sure. Yeah. I have it on page 100, which is where the first aid kit starts. Okay. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, well, I appreciate you so much. You're so wonderful. You are such oh, a thank you. Crosses your path. Thank you so much for being my first guest on my Fridays with Fallon series. Oh, where- I'm the first. Yeah, well, the first with Fr- with uh, Fallon on Fridays. Fridays I was waiting Fallon. to have you for a special time, and this was it. So I'm honored. I'm so honored. Oh, well, it's so good to see you, and really, really appreciate you helping anyone that sees this and knows how we can help them repair from a concussion. Thank you, Fallon. It's been a joy. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Yes, ma'am. You too. Bye.